fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Rico. Are you Silver? Hey! The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, had pitched camp in the hills outside of the little town of Rimrock. A short distance from their campsite, desert land stretched to the south as far as the eye could see. It was just a little before sunset, and it was the sharp-eyed Tonto who interrupted their preparations for supper. Kimasabi, we see someone coming across desert land. Where, Tonto? I don't see anyone. You look. Off to right at Joshua Tree. Over there. It looked like man. Yes, I see him now. He seems to be staggering. See him fall down. Come on, we'll go to him. Uh, maybe him wander in desert long time. Yes, I have my canteen with me. Him not move. Look, Kimasabi, him wear trooper uniform. Yes, I know. Perhaps a little water will bring him to. Raise him up, Tonto. Uh, he do it. Uh, water. Water. Here you are. Easy now. That's enough for now. Thanks, mister. Oh, him bad off, Kimasabi. I know, Tonto. I have to take him back to camp. You, your master. We're here to help you. Help me. Please, those Indians don't let him get me. I can't go back. I can't. Oh, him out of head, seem like. <laughs> yes. Don't Come on, we'll carry him back to our camp. No, he's more rational. He can tell us what happened. No, help me lift him, Tonto. Ah, be doing Carefully, the Lone Ranger and Tonto carried the young trooper back to their camp and nursed him through that night and most of the next day. Late the next afternoon, the young man opened his eyes and stared up at the Lone Ranger who was bending over him. Uh, I seem to remember you with that mask. You may be able to talk now, King uh, Tabby. An Indian. Take him away. Don't let Please him get don't me. Please don't be up. alarmed. Tonto won't hurt you. Uh, He's your friend, too. He helped nurse you. I, I don't understand. I, I thought he was Why? one of those... What make you afraid of Indian? Yes, if you care to tell us what happened, perhaps we can help you. You you wouldn't understand. Nobody will ever understand. I think we will. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. My name is Roy Robbins. My, my father is commandant at Fort Davis. I've heard of Colonel Robbins. A month ago, I came out from the east as a corporal in my father's regiment at Fort Davis. I'd never been west before. I see. Go on, Roy. I 
I had some training back east, and my father requested that I be sent out here to join his regiment. He's very strict. So I've heard. Dad's been here in the West for some time. When I came out here, he treated me like he did all the others. I didn't mind that. Then a few days ago, he sent for me to come to his headquarters. Corporal Robbins reporting, sir. Very good, Corporal Robbins. Sit down, son. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. This afternoon, I had word that a small band of unfriendly Indians have camped a few miles to the north of here. The scout who brought in the report thinks that they are reconnoitering for Red Cloud, the Indian chief who has been upon causing us trouble. Well, sir. I'm going to ask for ten volunteers. Go to their encampment and drive them out. I want you to be one of those who volunteer. What? Oh, but, Dad, I, I'm new to the West. I haven't had any experience with Indians. In fact, I've never even seen that one. That makes no difference, Roy. They're enemies who must be dealt with. It's about time you gain some experience against the Indians. This is your chance. Please, Dad, let me wait Corporal until... Corporal Robbins, I expect you to act like a trooper. Now, when I call for volunteers, I want you to give a good example to the rest and be the first to step forward, you understand? Yes, sir. Very well. See that you do. Can we go now? Yes, sir. Later that afternoon, when he called for volunteers, I was the first to step forward. I see. What happened after that, Roy? Well, I rode out with the other nine troopers. Sergeant Murray was put in charge of the group. We rode most of that night. Early the next morning, the sergeant called a halt. I noticed that most of the others were a bit on edge when we stopped. Men... The place where those Indians are camped is just over that hill ahead. I plan to take them by surprise. This is the time to do it. But Sarge, we've been riding all night. Yeah, we ought to rest a bit. Dawn is just breaking. They won't be expecting a raid now. I say we're going to ride in on them before they know we're here. Look, Sergeant Kent, we send somebody ahead to sort of look around first. The colonel's orders are to route them out of there as soon as we arrive. If we wait, they might... Hey, yeah! They're ready for us. Here they come over the hill. Spread out and give them all your coat, men. As the other troopers spread out and fired at the charging Indians, I had only one thought in mind. To get away. I, I couldn't help it. When I saw those savages charging down on us, well, it was too much for me. What did you do? Well, I, I'd never seen Indians before, but... I'd heard so much about what they did to their enemies that for a moment I couldn't move. I, I couldn't even raise my gun to shoot. Then I... Well, I swung my horse around and let out at top speed. I see. Every time my horse slowed down, I spurred him on until... Finally, he... Well, he dropped beneath me. Oh, that's not good. I know, but... I couldn't seem to think of anything but getting away from those Indians. Roy, you aren't the first green trooper who has been put into a panic when he first met hostile Indians. Maybe not. But don't you see, I'm a deserter now. My father would be as hard on me as he would with any other trooper who deserted. I... I'm a coward. That depends, Roy. What do you mean? If you'd expected those Indians to attack like they did, do you think you would have deserted? I... I don't know. It was all so sudden. But my father is a proud man. He'll feel disgrace before his entire regiment on my account. I... I could never go back. I'd be court-martialed, maybe shot for desertion. Roy, if you want to prove that you aren't a coward, you will go back and face your father. Uh, no. No, I can't. You can't make me do that. I won't go here, back. Here, I here, couldn't take it do easy, that. Fella. I just Take couldn't. it easy. Forget all this for the time being and get some rest. Perhaps when you're stronger and have had a chance to think things over, you see everything in a different light. Come along, Toto. We'll prepare supper. Ah. Meanwhile, Colonel Robbins, Roy's father, had received a report from Sergeant Murray that his son had deserted during the Indian attack on the reconnoitering detail. The colonel, feeling infuriated and disgraced, sent a searching party out to find Corporal Robbins 
and bring him back to face punishment for desertion. Later, the colonel paced the floor in his headquarters as he talked to one of his junior officers, Lieutenant Jones. So the searching party you sent out found no trace of my... of Corporal Robbins, eh, Lieutenant? That's right, sir. They've searched for several days. Send out another searching party. Find him. And bring him back for punishment as a deserter. Very well, sir. That's what you it's want. Grace, that's what it is. Look, Colonel, it seems to me that... Well, uh, I... You were about to say something, Lieutenant. You have my permission to speak freely. I was going to say that, after all, Roy is your son, sir. He isn't the first green trooper to go into a panic when he came face to face with hostile Indians. Corporal Robbins is a deserter. But, Colonel, uh, I... The matter is closed, Lieutenant. Your job is to see that they find Corporal Robbins and bring him in. I have no use for cowards or deserters. Very well, sir. I'll send out another searching party immediately. Good. Come in. Well, Sergeant, what is it? The message just came from Major Weeks at Fort Lancaster, sir. Give it to me. Red Cloud said to be gathering forces to attack Fort Lancaster. Need immediate reinforcements. Signed, Major Weeks. That's bad news, sir. Yes. At dawn tomorrow, I'll take most of the troopers northward to Fort Lancaster, leaving you here, Lieutenant, with a small force to man Fort Davis. You and Sergeant Murray make the preparations at once. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. You can forget the searching party for Corporal Robbins right now. But as soon as I return, we'll continue the search for him. Yes, sir. All right. Prepare the men for departure at dawn. That same evening, Toto, who had gone to Rimrock for supplies, returned to the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting with Roy Robbins. Toto had brought back another horse with him. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, oh there, oh, there. Uh, he get another horse, came Sorry. Good enough. Any news in town? Uh-huh. He has something that's not good, Kimasabi. Oh, what is it? Me get supplies, then me go to back a cafe. Look in window, see who there. Window open. Well? Uh, two men sit at a table. One fella scout for troopers. Other, renegade Indian. Me hear him mention Colonel Robbins. Me listen. Now get this straight, Black Hawk. Listen close. Me listen close. Red Cloud wait for news from you, Wade Becker. Glad he trusts me. Tell Red Cloud this. I told the major at Fort Lancaster that Red Cloud was in the vicinity with a large force. That he planned to raid the fort, Savvy. Ah, uh, and you and I know Red Cloud isn't that far north at all. Anyway, Major Weeks sent a dispatch to Colonel Robbins and he needed reinforcements right away. I followed the messenger this far this afternoon and he went on to Fort Davis. What else, Black Hawk, tell Red Cloud? Tell him I'm sure Colonel Robbins will leave the fort with a large bunch of troopers. Probably at dawn tomorrow. And that'll leave Fort Davis pretty well unprotected. Ah, uh, that right. Tell Red Cloud to get his braves together tonight. They can ambush the colonel and his troopers in the narrow valley west of here. That's the only way to get to or from Fort Davis. Me know that. After the ambush, Red Cloud can move on down to Fort Davis and attack it. He won't have any trouble taking it either. Now, you better get out of here and get word to Red Cloud right away so as he can make preparations. So, renegades, name Black Hawk. Get up and leave cafe. Then me come tell you. Hmm. That valley is the only quick route to Fort Davis. The mountains on either side are impassable. It would take too long to take a roundabout trail. Red Cloud is said to be in camp close to the valley. That's right. We've got to try to get through that valley before Red Cloud moves in his braves. If we don't get a warning to Colonel Robbins, he and his troopers will be massacred, and Fort Davis will be taken. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Toto had returned from a trip to Rimrock, where he had gone for supplies and to get a horse for Roy Robbins' use. He told the Lone Ranger about a plan he had overheard to ambush Colonel Robbins and his troopers and to capture Fort Davis. The Lone Ranger decided upon quick action to warn the colonel. We leave now. We might be able to get through the valley before Red Cloud gets his brave set for the ambush. That's right. She's sleeping. He's in such a nervous condition, he'd be upset if he wakens and finds himself here alone. Oh, him be safe here in Grove, if well hidden. Should we get back soon? I know, Toto. I better look my note. Telling him if he's frightened to go into the cave there until we get back. I'll write the note and pin it to his blanket while you put his horse in the lean-to. Then you and I'll head for the valley in Fort Davis. All right, hurry, Toto. We've no time to lose. Uh-huh. A short time later, after a note had been written and pinned to Roy's blanket, the Lone Ranger and Toto were ready to leave the camp. Let's get going, Toto. Here, Silver. Anything fell easy? All right, let's go, Toto. One, Silver! As the Lone Ranger and Toto rode away from the camp, Roy Robbins, who had been dozing rather than sleeping, opened his eyes and watched them disappear in the bright moonlight along a well-beaten trail that skirted the desert land. For a moment, Roy closed his eyes again. Hazily, he recalled Tonto's arrival in camp with the extra horse, and in a confused way, he remembered the Indian and the masked man talking together. Then suddenly, Roy opened his eyes and sat upright, as words that had filtered through his mind seemed to form into a clearly spoken statement. We've got to try to get through that valley before Red Cloud moves in his braves. If we don't get a warning to Colonel Robbins, he and his troopers will be massacred and Fort Davis will be taken. The masked man did say that. I'm sure of it. That's why they rode away in a hurry. I have to follow them. I have to help save Dad and the troopers. This note attached to my blanket. What's it say? All right. Go on. I was right. He's gone. If you put a horse in the lean to, I'll get him. I've got to help them somehow. Easy, boy. Still saddle. That's good. Easy. Uh, Get up there. Come on, boy. It took the Lone Ranger and Tonto several hours to reach the point where the trail entered the narrow valley. It was only a short distance through the valley, less than a quarter of a mile. But the heavy growth and many boulders on either slope made it possible for hundreds of Indians and their ponies to be hidden, even in broad daylight. Though the moonlight hit the trail as the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached, the bottom of the valley itself was in heavy darkness because of shadows cast by the mountain range. The two men reined up at the point where the trail dipped into the valley. Oh, no. It pretty dark where trail goes through the valley. Yes, I know. Look, King Sippy, we notice the moonlight. Prince, many Indian ponies. Mm. Heading into the valley, too. That's right. We get here too late, seem like. Yes. The darkness of the trail through there would be an advantage. Red Cloud have many braves, Kim Sabi. Them here hoofbeats and trail down there. It's plenty risky. But we have to warn the colonel. Troopers not travel at night. Them always start out at dawn. Yes, I know. It's not far through valley. Why we not wait? Sun come up soon. When we see soldiers coming to valley at other end, we give plenty shots for warning. Them here shooting, them not go into valley. That would warn them, all right. Yet, in spite of the risk, I think I might make it through the valley now, Toto. Oh, that not good, Kimasabi. Maybe Red Cloud's braves say... Wait, Kimasabi, wait. Let me hear someone coming down trail. Yes, I hear who beats too. Quick, Toto. Pull over behind those bushes. Come on, Silver. Come, come, fella. Easy. Oh, 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 fella. Oh, fella. Pass a minute. Yes. Hello. That's young Robbins. Ah, you see light on face. In here is talk, maybe. That could be it. He's going to warn his father. He's riding right into the valley. I'm going to follow him. Me come too. Monster! Get him up, Stout! Before Roy had reached the sharp bend where the trail went into the darkness of the valley, the Lone Ranger and Tonto caught up to him. Roy, Roy Robbins, wait. Pull Silver, pull it. Oh, 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 it's you. You keep voice low. You can't go into the valley, Roy. 
Indians are hidden on the slope, sir. I know about the plan ambush. I heard you talk about it. I've got to warn Dad and the troopers. I've got to. The risk for you is too great, Roy. I've got to warn them. You're not afraid of Indians now? Well, I... Yes. Yes, I am. But I'm going through anyway. They'll be massacred. I won't let you stop me. I'm going through now. Get up there. Come on. Come on, Scout. Instead of preventing Roy from entering the valley, the Lone Ranger, delighted that the boy was at last showing courage, decided to let him go and to ride through the dark valley with him in case his courage should fail. Tonto rode at the masked man's side. Riding at breakneck speed, the three men followed the trail into the darkness of the valley. The Lone Ranger knew that hundreds of sharp ears would hear their hoofbeats and that hundreds of sharp eyes would try to penetrate the darkness to locate a target for bullets and arrows. For a moment, there was no other sound than the steady pounding of the horse's hoofs. Then a bedlam of savage yells broke out on the slopes and mingled with a whine of bullets. Faster, Roy! Ride faster! We're almost out of the valley! I can't go faster! We've got to make it! Indians come down slope behind us and give chase, maybe? Yes. I'll drop back a bit and cut a hold them off. I'm coming, Master Silver. I can't go on. Steady, Roy. I'm trying to lift you over here, old Silver, with me. Steady now. Riding close beside Roy, the Lone Ranger reached out and with a mighty effort lifted him bodily from his saddle. Swing your foot over quick behind me. I, I, I made it. Hang on to me, Roy. We're almost through. Once out of here, we'll be all right. Run, Silver. Oh. In another moment, Silver, bearing his double load with Scout and Tonto bringing up the rear, swept out of the valley into the moonlight and headed at a fast gallop along the trail toward Fort Davis. Gradually, the shots and yells behind them grew fainter. We're getting away from Kimasami. I know, but we can't let up yet. Come on, the last count. It was some time before the great-hearted white stallion Silver and the faithful paint horse Scout slackened their terrific pace and were reined to a halt. Oh, sir. Oh, fellow. Oh, fellow. Me help Robinson. Down now. You all right, Roy? I am all right. You get down now. Hey, Let me help you. Thanks. I... Uh... Him faint, Kimus. I mean... Yes, Toto, steady. Put him down, Toto. It's his shoulder. Uh... We fixed one well now. As soon as we get him fixed up... We can ride on slowly until we meet the troopers. It's almost dawn now. Here, I'll give him some water. Here you are, fellow. Take it easy. Uh, him coming to now. Oh, him, plenty brave fellow. Yes, he is. Here, take a bit of water, Roy. <laughs> I must have fainted. Thanks. <sighs> Your hand, it's wet. Kimasabi, you get hit? <laughs> it's not much, Toto. Bullet scratched my forearm. <laughs> you had a close call, too, Tonto. Look oh. at your saddle. Yeah, the arrow's stuck in back of saddle. If you two had... Never mind that now, Roy. Tonto's just about finished bandaging your wound. Then we'll ride on slowly until we meet your father and the troopers. An hour later, dawn had broken... Colonel Robbins and his troopers were riding along the trail when Sergeant Murray pointed ahead and spoke. Look ahead, Colonel. Two riders coming down the trail. So there is. Moving along slowly, it seems to me. Yes, sir, I guess. Hey, it looks like one of them's wearing a black mask. One on the white horse. Uh, George, I believe you're right. Halt the troop. Yes, sir. Through! Halt! Here they come. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have you covered, mister. You'll have to give a reason why you came here masked. That's my, that's my son riding with you. Holy smoke, Colonel. It is your son riding behind the masked man. Your son and I came to warn you of an ambush back in the valley. Red Cloud had his braves waiting there. He planned to ambush this troop and then to attack Fort Davis. Uh, you get down now, Roy. Here, me help you. Thanks, John Oak. What he told you is true, Dad. You... You think I'd believe the word of a deserter? Sergeant. Yes, sir? Have these troopers taken into custody and returned to the fort. I can't stand a coward. Just a minute, Colonel Robbins. Easy, Silver. Believe me, sir, when I say your son is far from being a coward. He learned about the ambush and he started through that valley to warn you and the troop. Even though he was afraid... 
I knew it might mean his death. As it is, he was wounded, as you can see. But see here, sir. You should have known better than to send a green trooper and a scouting party against hostile Indians. Many others have become panicky when they first saw savages. Yes, I... I guess that's right. That's what Lieutenant Jones said to me. But see here, how do I know I can believe you? You're a mass man. It does. Does this mean anything to you, Colonel? A bullet. Why should... Is made of silver. Yes, sir. Major Weeks spoke of a masked man who used silver bullets. Now I know. And I do believe you, sir. Thanks. I hope you'll treat Corporal Robbins like the hero he is instead of like a prisoner, sir. It takes a great deal of bravery to do something in spite of one's fear, as he did. Colonel, I... I'm sorry about the Right way now, I... son, I'm not your colonel. I'm proud to say I'm your father. Oh, gosh, Dan. Easy, big fellow. Easy. You were betrayed by a scout named Wade Becker and a renegade called Blackhawk. Both of them are at the fort now. Probably be waiting to do more treachery when the Indians attack as they think they will. We'll attend to them. We'll get back right now. Good enough. Come along, Toto. Adios. Adios to you. Get up, scout. They saved my life twice, Dan. When I was lost on the desert and when I was shot coming through the valley... I'll never forget that, mass man. I won't either, son. He brought you back and taught me a lesson in the bargain. When alive, what an officer that Lone Ranger would not make in the service, eh, son? This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.